Bravo 3. Copy. Two, one, zero. Go. I don't feel it. But it's in general just on the zero, right? One is good. Thirteen, yeah, that's not. Twenty is good. Thirteen. Welcome to Barcelona, the host of round one of ELMS 2024. And let me tell you, this year will not disappoint. We have amazing drivers, fierce competition, and some incredible tracks that we're going to be visiting. Starting here in Barcelona before moving on to La Castellet in May, visiting the iconic Imola in July, and then on to Spa in August. Then we'll see a brand new racetrack, Mugello before concluding the season in Portimao. So the calendar looks good, but what about the cars? Well, ELMS is now the home of LMP2, 22 cars in the field. But the cars are a little bit different. Power is increased. There is a weight reduction. A larger fuel tank. All for performance. Now let's take a look at some of the drivers because there are a lot of new faces behind the steering wheel this year, but also the experienced drivers are back as well, the likes of Robert Kubica, Louis Delatres. So let's meet some of them. <laughs> new team, a new car, new environment. It was quite easy, to be honest, uh, to come in this team. It's quite uh, welcoming. Since I'm young, I'm watching uh, Le Mans, so obviously uh, this is inspiring. And then as well, the LMP2 is just uh, looking great. There is some old opponents in Formula 2. There is as well uh, some old um, driver in Formula 1. It's great as well to, to show uh, what you can do uh, beside them. The championship has become much bigger as well, many more cars in LMP2, uh, which is very interesting. Also, it's not many races, which I am still a um, reserve driver for Formula 1, uh, which uh, so it doesn't clash much with those as well. So it was a good option for me and I'm really enjoying the experience. We're doing quite many laps uh, over the races, you know, it's endurance racing, so you do quite many laps. That's a, that's a good positive for us to stay sharp and ready. Meet me at the top. Well, as always, you know, I, I, I have been always since kid uh, looking forward to race as the highest level possible, and I think uh, ELMS offers the highest level in LMP2 category. This year we have full power, full uh, downforce. Uh, last year we didn't have this uh, pleasure. ELMS is offering, I think, uh, uh, very high, st high standards and uh, good racing. You see me going up. The LMS this year is extremely strong. There is, I think, 22 P2s. Uh, the grid has never been so tough. Definitely will be hard. Uh, we're aiming to fight at the front, of course, but uh, I think it will be definitely hard and nice uh, show for the fans. It's very exciting to be part of a top team. Uh, being, I mean, the objective is to race for victories. And when you see the grid, all those talented drivers, fast teams, uh, will be very exciting and very challenging. So I'm even more excited to try and go for a third title. We wish the very best of luck to all the drivers and to Bailen Garcia especially. She is a local driver who's 24 years old and will be graduating from Le Mans Cup to ELMS this season. Let's dig into her a little bit. I 
I know it can be a lot of pressure to start at home. Uh, all your people uh, are coming to the track, uh, family, friends. It's a lot of work and I, I need to do a lot of things uh, outside of that. I mean, telemetry and talk to the engineers, set up, uh, prepare myself. And my father has always told me that uh, your interest is not the same as the others. So you need to think for yourself and think about what the interest is for, for others in order to know what's happening. Finally we're here, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> this is a machine, this looks like a track compared to the LMP3. How do you climb this? You need to climb to get in there. There is a step here. <laughs> okay. Only this, not the other one. This one, okay. The, uh, the, this one. Oh. With my father it's always been a very good relationship. I mean, we all live for the same thing at home and, and with my dad we all think we both think about the same thing. We only talk about racing, really. Sleeping <laughs> in, in a formula. No, 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 no. I was eager to, to show, because I, uh, it's the first time that Belen uh, see the, this car, because it's, it's brand new, I, I start with uh, this, this season. And uh, yeah, I, of course, I would like to share uh, what is inside the car, what, uh, how, I, even how I manage the car. <laughs> Let's go to the stage. Okay. I only have two races with this and uh, I don't know where is the limit. Still I don't know. Wow. But this, believe me, it's very high. No, no, I see. When, when we are in the car, I, I like to ask him about the, uh, oh, and, and you do this, to do that, and, and kind of aspects of driving and of the car, so to understand how the balance works and how um, he, you know, manages the, the, the car. You know that the car turns perfectly, very I, easy. I see, I see, it's very yeah, easy. Only braking, only braking, you can go. You're racing with the pedals, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's cool. It doesn't care about anything on the road. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> My dream is racing and his dream is racing. Not that I race. <laughs> so it's a different story. Uh, and yeah, I've been pushing a lot to, to be able to race in, in fact. When I was 15, I started racing like more properly. And 2019, things change uh, with my first season in, in formulas. Now here we are. So the journey started like really early for me in, in the world, but then uh, my motorsport career was late. Now this uh, couple of jumps. Oh. You can't believe the grip in the sand. It's, it's crazy. Wow. I don't know if I would be able to do this. <laughs> Respect. So yeah, the level is really high in the LMS and also you need to take into account a lot of more things because the races are longer, because the traffic. You have two other teammates rather than one, so you have to combine with them and, and share a lot more. So um, the setup is different and you have to find a compromise between the three of us. Mainly very happy seeing that, that she's enjoying, uh, she's racing at this level. I never imagined um, for me, and uh, I never imagined for, even for, for Belen, we will arrive to this point. It's my big jump this year, so there is a lot of challenge.
and something new for this year, a brand new category, LMGT3s will be making their debut in ELMS. Let's learn a little bit more about them. In the LM GT3 category, we have four different kinds of cars. Uh, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Porsche. GT3 is a very popular category, and our teams wanted uh, for us to move towards this more worldwide category that's uh, already very popular. It's popular because there's a lot of manufacturers. Uh, the GT3 base exists since a long time, and many teams have GT3s in their garages. The technical specifications of LMGT3 are mainly limited to sensors and the homologation process. The homologation process was developed with the FIA and so we have now a, a better control over the aerodynamics of the car, a better control over the powertrain of the car. It's very, very much close to the same GT3 as the one you see uh, in Michelin Cup, for instance. Uh, there might be some small differences in aerodynamics to fit the homologation window better, but otherwise the cars are exactly the same. Uh, the LM GT3 for ELMS is a very good decision, especially when we know that uh, in WEC the LM GT3 use, is used, so in Le Mans the LM GT3 is used. So it gives an opportunity for ELMS teams to have a platform that is compatible with Le Mans. race is just about to get underway with thousands of fans here for the opening round of the European Le Mans series. A host of motorsport enthusiasm congregating in Spain's Cathedral of Speed, the Circuit de Catalunya. It's time to take a look at the grid. Brand new LMGT3 category, it was Sara Bovi who clinched the first pole position of the year with the number 85 Iron Dames Porsche. In LMP3, Manuel Espirito Santo put the number 17 cool racing machine on the class pole. In LMP2 Pro-Am, Giorgio Roda claimed pole for the season opener with the number 77 Proton Competition Machine. But the overall pole position in LMP2, courtesy of a flying lap from Ben Hanley, went to United Autosports, the number 22 machine.
start of the first of two formation laps for the four hours of Barcelona. Here we go, ready to go racing. Pole sitter Philip Ugrand for United Autosports leads them to the lights. And the 2024 European Le Mans series gets underway. Paul Lafarge for Edex Sports on the outside of the front row. We're riding on board with Lorenzo Flusser for Cool Racing. Started fifth, he's in third place into the first corner. Great start. Looks like everybody's just about kept it clean. United Autosport lead and up into second place now is Flusser for Cool Racing. He's gone by Algar Pro. So he's taken second place away from Matthias Kaiser. Oh, and trouble already for James Dason. RLR M Sport facing the wrong way. Position changes in every corner. They sweep down the hill, red and white. That's AO by TF's Robert Kubitzer going by Edex Sport. And that puts him up to six position. Great start from the Polish driver. Two, three, nearly four wide behind. Vector Sport white with the red and black highlights. Started 14th. Ryan Cullen's now up to eight. So he's had a good opening lap as well. As United Auto Sports, red, white, and blue, and the green and yellow of Inter Europol. And they have both lost ground in this opening lap away from their grid positions. Dark car with the blue highlights. That is our LMP2 Pro Am leader, Proton Competition, ahead of the 83 AF Corsa car. That's the chrome with the red highlights. Side by side behind Nielsen with the white nose. They started on pole and inside the lime yellow green. That's the Richard Meal by TDS car. That's the battle for third in Pro Am. And Nielsen's Sean Falp has got the better of the Richard Mill car of Rodrigo Sales as they stream down the straight once more. Into Europol, yellow and green, Oliver Gray having a little look at BJ Garg in the 23 United car. But behind the white nose, John Falp for Nielsen goes by Francois Perodo for second in LMP2 Pro-Am on board with the American driver now. Good job, Sarah. Keep an eye on the tire, please. We'll go for 24 more laps, 24 to 25 more laps. Sorobovi leads LMGT3 in the pink Porsche for Iron Dames. Johnny Larson right behind in second place in Formula Racing's Ferrari. And then the Iron Lynx Lamborghini of Hiroshi Yamaguchi right behind him. There he is. Just behind the yellow Kessel Racing Car Guys Ferrari. That's in fourth place. That's been started by Takeshi Kimura. And he's got the Spirit to Race Ferrari number 55 right behind him. Duncan Cameron starting that one. All Mexican battle for fourth place in LMP2. Alejandro Garcia in the blue and black cool racing car. Green and yellow into Europol. That's Sebastian Alvarez. There's Paul Lafargue, started second on the grid, now down to seventh place. Robert Kubitzer with the white nose ahead of him. LMP3 battle for third place. Alexander Bukantsov, who started sixth for Inter Europol, being passed by Matt Bell. The Euro International number 11 car started eighth in class. He's now up to third. Battle for second in LMP3, and Miguel Cristobal, the pole sitter, slides around as Matt Bell goes around the outside to take second for Euro International. And Alexander Bukantsov of Inter Europol is right there challenging as well. Inter Europol's Sebastian Alvarez under pressure now from this man as we ride with Robert Kubitzer. Kubica has been racing in LMP2 in the World Endurance Championship for the last couple of seasons and is one of the star drivers in ELMS. But Alvarez now being held up by the Ferrari from AF Corsa and Kubica goes right by or tries to round the outside but the Aston Martin's going to be in his way so he can't go inside, he'll have to go outside and Alvarez takes the place right back Kubica now tries to fire it up the inside, but there's another slow car in the way and he loses out twice. Oh, there's trouble for Manuel Maldonado. Three, two, 
One, we are under full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. Everybody slows immediately to 80 kilometers an hour. No overtaking allowed. And that's RLR M Sports James Dason being towed away. He was in trouble as well. Three, two, one, green. The track is back to green. The track is back to green. And there's the battle for the lead. Look with the red nose, Philip Ulgran, and try to come around underneath him. Lorenzo Frusa for Cool Racing takes the lead at the restart. He had a slightly better run down there into turn one than Philip Ulgran. The Romanian driver jumped at the restart. You have to be so quick here. Look, immediately we're on the gas. Ugran reacts, but just a fraction too late. They're both here in account from their teams at the same time the race director gives it. In the pits, early pit stop for Robert Kubitzer, AO by TF. There's damage on the left front corner, but a new nose will sort out his handling problems. In replay, a change of LMP3 lead. Matt Bell sweeps around Julian Jerby in the Team Virage car to go in front in number 11 for Euro International. Battle for sixth place in LMP2. Ryan Cullen inside Alejandro Garcia. That did not go well for either driver. We are under virtual safety car. Everyone to 80. Nico Lapierre there in the Cool Racing team box and into the pit lane comes Cool Racing's Lorenzo Fusa, our new race leader. United are in as well. Alejandro Garcia losing lots of time in Cool Racing's 47 car though. LMGG3 leaders are in as well. Sarabobi stays in the Iron Dames Porsche. Looks like fuel and tyres going on to the pink car. Johnny Larson in at Formula Racing as well. Pit entry closed, we are under safety car. Car 37, please keep the 80. Car 37, please keep the 80. All cars to pick up the pace to catch car 37, please. All cars to pick up the pace to catch car 37, please. From virtual safety car to safety car, and then back to green flag racing. 37 cool racing leads from United Autosport with Inti Europol in third, and then Algarve Pro in fourth place with the pale blue highlights right behind United's 23 car. Then a little gap to Edex Sport and Panis. They're in seventh ahead of Nielsen and Iron Links Proton. Here is our Pro-Am battle, Proton versus AF Corsa and Richard Mille by TDS with the bright day glow colours and those Pro-Am cars with the pale boards on the side, the sort of sea green colour. On board with Sara Bovi, Kessel Racing Ferrari, the car guy car right in front of us. So that took the lead during the virtual safety car, safety car period, but Bovi goes back in front in the Porsche. The Iron Lynx Lamborghini, the bright green car, is third in LMGT3. And Spirit to race ahead of Formula Racing. Somebody's lost a wing mirror. That's one of the LMGT3 cars. Takeshi Kimura, that was contact with Michael Jensen's RLR M Sport LMP3 machine. They have got spare doors with mirrors attached, but they're not the right color, are they? Looks like he's going to soldier on with that one. United Autosports in the battle for second place in LMP2. Philip Ulgran now under pressure from Sebastian Alvarez in the yellow and green from Inter Europol. And there's a meandering Aston Martin. Ulgran has to go the long way round and straight through underneath goes Sebastian Alvarez. Well, the traffic doesn't always break for you, but it did there for the Inter Europol team. They look pretty happy with that in the garage. Well, they will be if he can escape Philip Ulgran's attentions. Anyway, into Europol now, up to second place. Into the pit lane comes the race leader for Cool Racing. Number 37, Lorenzo Flusa. Driver change now. So he hands over to Otomo Miyata of Japan. Giorgio Roda in the Proton car being chased from behind by Richard Mille by TDS's Rodrigo Sales. Sales dives to the inside of the Interpol LMP3 machine. 
Rhoda running a little wide on the exit there, and that allows Sales to close, and again misses the apex by miles. Okay, Giorgio, box, box is up, driver change, box, box is up, driver change. Giorgio Rhoda in the pits, not before time to hand over the car. It'll take on a new driver, fuel and tyres. Sarapovi leading an LMGT3 by some margin, but not from the bright yellow Kessel Racing Ferrari behind her. That's Takeshi Kimura down in 10th place, but he's been trying to get by. What is wrong with this guy? And I was pretty clear on TV, so now we're reporting. Driver change at AF Corsa in LMP2 Pro and Francois Perroda, who started the race, hands over to longtime co driver Alessio Rivera. While Charles Leclerc's younger brother Artur gets ready to make his debut in ELMS for Panis. LMP2, LMP3, and LMGT3 all in the same corner, and just too much going on. Alexander Bukantsov gets eased out into the dirt. It was a pretty good start, clean, which was the main thing, you know, to, to get that first in clean, get through a bit through the field, do as well as you can, but also to control the tyre management and feel and everything. So now, yeah, overall really good. We achieved what we wanted in the first team, in the first team. And now, yeah, the team did an amazing job. The car was amazing. And yeah, yeah, really positive start. Fabio Scherer for United also sports under pressure now from Matteo Capietto in the Iron Lynx Proton car. This is for seventh place in LMP2. Just ahead, number 12, Torsten Kratz, WTM by Rinaldi Racing, the LMP3 machine. He can't go underneath, he's going to have to go the long way round the outside, but look at that. Capietto goes past and Scherer clatters into Torsten Kratz, knocking him off the track. And that will result in a stop and go penalty for Fabio Scherer and the 23 United Autosport car. Almost 90 minutes into the race here in Barcelona, LMGT3 still being led by Sara Bovi in the Iron Dames Porsche, the Iron Lynx Lamborghini in second place, Formula Racing the best of the Ferraris in third. Number 30 to Keynes, Jean-Baptiste Simonard held up behind a GT3 car, and Nicola Pino from Nielsen Racing takes the advantage, Simonard tries to push back, but overcooks it and spins out. Just trying to drill the car up the inside. Too much lock and too much power at the same time. Tyres just couldn't cope. LMP2 Pro-Am battle for third. Andy Merrick, red, white and blue, United Autosport. Alessio Rivera right behind, right alongside into the penultimate turn for AF Corsa and hangs on as he moves up to third. Replay of the change for eighth place in LMP2 United Auto Sports losing out. Artur Leclerc goes past Fabio Scherer for Panis Racing. Driver stint over Sara Bovi hands over the car to Rahel Frey. LMGC3 leaders still the Iron Dames Porsche. At the moment, everything is going well. I mean, I was super happy with the car I had. You know, we knew, we knew that heat would all be about managing the tyres, keeping a consistent pace through the stint. We were also a bit... Uh, I think in terms of strategy, we, we did some good choice. Uh, it's not easy when you're leading, but uh, the guys uh, back there, they did some, uh, some good decisions. So, yeah, no, uh, Al is driving, and I hope we can keep that advantage. Obviously, uh, it's not going to be easy, but we'll do our best. And as you know, we've got a brand new category, the LMG T3s. How are they to drive and how are you feeling with the car? Well, you know, GT3 is not completely a new category for us. It's true that LMG T3 is a bit different. Um, but I think it's fair to say that we got uh, familiar with that Porsche quite quickly. Uh, it's really cool to drive. Um, and, you know, as I said, I, the cars that you are doing good results with are always nice cars. So let's hope that uh, we can keep that uh, idea of this uh, Porsche GT3 and um, GT3. Battle for second place in Pro-Am in LMP2. Colin Noble for Nielsen with the white nose. Right behind, Alessio Rivera for AF Corsa. He's closed in on the Nielsen driver and now looking for a way through. Looks like he's got a little bit more grip to play with. They've got the Euro International LMP3 car in front and that might prove an issue. But it looks like Alessio Rivera's got the move done anyway. Goes by Colin Noble. 
up to second place in Pro-Am. Trouble for United. That's Andy Merrick, the number 21 car. And that is any hope of a good result in Pro-Am gone for them. Cool Racing leading with Ritomo Miyata of Japan at the wheel. But Algarve Pro's second placed Ollie Caldwell is gradually closing for Miata. He must be getting bigger in the mirrors every time he looks behind him. Caldwell tantalizingly not quite close enough. There is the bright blue behind that Aston Martin. That's Caldwell creeping relentlessly closer. It was hot in the car. Um, I had to do at least uh, one hour 45. And uh, we did our first stop quite short, so normally we shouldn't be able to make it with the fuel. But luckily I just had to save fuel during my whole stint, so uh, I did not have to be at the limit. But yes, it was hot. Zimbabwe's Axel Jeffries in the green iron links Lamborghini under real pressure now from Conrad Lawson. The Dane looks to the inside, the Formula Racing Ferrari late and deep under braking and squeezes through. 28 into the pits for Edex Sport, Richard Dugerus hits the marks for routine service. LMP3 in the battle for fifth place, Belen Garcia for DKR Engineering chasing down RLR's Nick Adcock. Through goes the Algarve Pro LMP2 machine and she gets in deep behind Adcock as he is a little offline. Right behind her was Adam Ali, the LMP3 leader. There he is, the Euro International number 11 car going around the outside. They're both having to be very cautious here. He can't do it there. He's going to have to try again down the hill. Belen Garcia had the inside line and held on well. But midway through the race, the LMP3 leader is trying to lap the cars who are battling for fifth. Overall race leading battle now. There's Oli Caldwell, Algarve Pro, no longer chasing Ritomo Miata. For Cool Racing, he has caught the leader. 37 car makes its way past the Aston Martin. Caldwell doesn't get that break in traffic, having to go the long way round, outside, inside. Yes, stays in touch. And in front of Miata is Balen Garcia now in her LMP3 car, so she won't be quite as quick down the hill. Miata goes inside her, gets that break in traffic. Yes, he gets through. Caldwell, though, can he keep his speed up onto the straight? Yes, just so she managed to stay out of the way. Caldwell doesn't gain, but didn't lose there either. A big part of being in the fastest cars is making your way through traffic. Got the 88 into Europol LMP3 car in front of him now. Return on Miata and Oli Caldwell is right there once more. Any mistake here and he'll pounce. Miata trying to find a way past. He goes out wide. Caldwell tight on the inside line. He's going to box Miata in and takes the lead of the race. Savvy racing. Quick check in to LMGT3. Oh yes, it is still the Iron Dames who are leading. Rahel Frey doing a great job as ever in the pink Porsche. Now part of the team management structure in World Endurance, but still very much driving here in ELMS. LMP2 Pro-Am leader Gregoire Sossi in the Richard Mille by TDS racing machine with that flamboyantly lurid colour scheme. AF Corsa and Proton currently in the top three, but there have been lots of changes in this class. Here's the battle for third in LMP3. Kayaski in the 88 into Europol car and Euro International's Adam Ali, number 11, right behind him. The Canadian giving chase and looking for a way by now. Really pushing hard. Your international cars run very strongly all race and he drives around the outside for third place. In the Palace Garage, they're watching the battle for fifth in LMP2. On the left of the screen, Arturo Leclerc dives past Maceo Capietto in the Iron Lynx Proton machine and he'd sent it deep down the inside, a classic Barcelona move. Algarve Pro and Alex Lynn taking over from Oli Caldwell. Lynn won the title last year for Algarve Pro with James Allen and Kiffin Simpson looking to do the same again. 
In 65 for Panis is Charles Milesi. Tom Dillman takes over in the Inter Europol number 43 machine. Mathieu Vaxivier jumping in at AF Corsa. Some absolutely stellar driver talent in this ELMS field from front to back. Driver change for Marino Sato, handing over to Ben Hanley at United. And here is Guillaume Orion at Team Virage, 2023 Michelin Le Mans Cup champion, ready for his first stint in ELMS. LMP2 Pro-Am, the battle for third. Nelson Piquet versus Albert Costa. Albert Costa, the Spaniard, closing in on veteran Brazilian now, Nelson Piquet Jr. Just over an hour to go, plenty of racing left. That's Nelson Piquet, outside turn two, in the barriers. Looks like there's damage. Replay shows him going around the outside of the Pro-Am car of DKR's Lawrence Hoare, and there was contact. He's trying to go outside turn one to inside turn two, and Lawrence Hoare just could not keep away from him. PK hard into the barriers, full course yellow for recovery. Still loads of fans taking shelter in the grandstand, and there is the Virage car looking pretty bruised. Going back to green, there's the race leader behind Geoffroy Orion in the Virage LMP3 car. And around the outside goes our race leader back up to racing speed for cool racing. Algar Pro not far behind, but PK is out of the race. There is a lot of traffic uh, in race that is quite hard to manage at first and a lot of my tire management as you do to stint in the tires you pass you pass one hour and a half on the same st same um, set of tires so yeah it's uh, it's quite different and we know you're a bit of an expert in uh, single seater formula uh, how different is the car now and how hard has it been to get used to it it feels uh, more heavy it feels uh, less grip of all more, more tricky to in the slow speed corners but as well in high speed corners there is a lot less downforce so yeah, it's a completely other way to drive, which you, you need to adapt, especially in a race run. The cars are a bit um, different uh, things, but, uh, but yeah, it's still really enjoyable to drive. Into the final 50 minutes, and here is our race lead battle. Cool racing now with Malte Jakobsen on board. Alex Lynn for Algarve Pro in second place. And he knows how to get speed out of this car and how to put the pressure on the man in front. Final pit stop for the Iron Dames. Rahel Frey handing over to Michelle Gatting. And the battle for the lead continues to rage. Michelle Gatting stopped at pit exit. What has happened? You have no power or is it tire? You have no power or is it tire? I don't know, I don't know if it's the tire that went loose or something. Just as soon as I released the pit limiter, something broke on the front left. I cannot continue. <laughs> copy that, copy that. Sorry for that. The race long leaders are out. Cool racing in the pits. Malte Jakobsen being patient as he has final service. Three, two, one. Full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. We are going to pull the car towards the pit entry. The team is informed that the car is treated as if the car is stopped on track. The car, of course, is the Iron Dames Porsche. This is what happens. Let's listen. 20 seconds to remove full course yellow. She's on the pit speed limiter. Everything sounds good. Full course yellow will be removed in 10. No five, vibrations. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Full course yellow has been removed. Thank you. And so too has the number 85 Iron Dames Porsche. They are out. And there is the errant wheel nut. Trouble for ultimate, that's Mathieu Lahaye. He's gone backwards with 
wheels in the gravel. He won't get out of there on his own. Of course, are making their final stop. Leaders in Pro-Am. Mathieu Vaxivier stays aboard. Three, two, one. Full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. We will have a service being done at the exit of T, at the middle of T10, driver's right in the runoff. We will have marshals exposed there. United making their final pit stop for Ben Hanley, and he will leave the pit lane still in third place because everybody else is doing 80 kilometers an hour in the pit lane. It's all change in LMGT3 with Iron Dames out. Formula Racing's Nicholas Nielsen is now our race leader. GR up to second. Iron links with the Lamborghini in third behind that GR Racing Porsche. On board with the cool racing race leader, Malta Jakobsen. How cool does he feel? Well, he's 10 seconds now ahead of Algar Pro's Alex Lynn, and that gives him a lot more breathing space. Final flurry of pit stops happening in the final half hour. Duquesne's James Allen, last year's driver's champion with Algar Pro and Paul-Luc Chatin. Right behind him, there's the 47 car, the second of the cool racing entries. This is the battle for 11th. And James Allen onto the straight, but Paul-Luc Chatin gaining there in the final couple of corners. Has he got more tyre grip to play with? James Allen having to defend early. He goes to the inside, the driver's right down the hill. But Paul-Luc Chatin knows there's plenty of grip on the outside on the racing line. And through he goes, he's up to 11th. Is the battle for the final podium spot in LMGT3. Andrea Caldarelli in the Iron Lynx Lamborghini, factory Lamborghini driver. Behind him in the orange and black Proton Competition Porsche, factory Porsche driver Julian and Lauer. It is time for the big guns to do their best. Right now, with the failure of the Iron Dames Porsche, Iron Lynx want to get that podium, but And Lauer is a Truly tough opponent. Both cool racing cars coming by them, 37 and 47. Nose to tail, just a second or two apart. Not causing any problems yet for Andrea Caldarelli in that lime green Lamborghini. Three, two, one. Full course yellow, full course yellow. As everybody slows to 80 kilometers an hour, gives a brave marshal a chance to pick up that large piece of bodywork that was in the middle of the road. Full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. And everybody right back onto it. All the battles resumed, but a couple of LMP2 cars now in the battle for third place between the green Lamborghini and the orange and black Porsche. And now everybody trying to weave their way through traffic. Final five minutes up and coming. Is it too late for Julian Landlauer to do anything about Andrea Caldarelli? The LMP2 Proton car goes by without disturbing the Italian. Oh, hasn't quite managed to do so, but keeps Andlauer behind. It's another Proton car. Oh, more trouble. That's Anton Jocard for Racing Spirit of Le Mans. And if he can't get going, that might effectively be the end of the race. Yellow flags out there. You don't want to go to full course yellow for the final minute. Last lap and a bit, and everybody bunched up in traffic, desperately trying to find their way through. Look for United Autosport, the red, white and blue. Ben Hanley challenging Alex Lynn. There is Hanley. That's the battle for second place. There's the Algarve Pro car of Alex Lynn. Hanley down the inside, can't get through, too much traffic. There'll be one to go, or maybe there won't. 30 seconds. Trying to get by the Formula Racing Ferrari. Can't find a way through there either. Alex Lynn in second, Ben Hanley in third. Now he gets clear. And they will be one more lap. Cool Racing's 37 car onto the final lap. 
Algarve Pro onto the final lap. United onto the final lap. Fifth place here for Alex Lynn and Algarve Pro was their worst result of last year. He does not want to lose second place. Ben Hanley finished fourth in the Pro-Am title race last year. He was on the podium in that category here in Barcelona. And there is traffic ahead, LMP3 and LMP2 cars ahead of Alex Lynn and Ben Hanley. Could it yet happen? Could Hanley snatch second place here? He's closing with every meter. Doesn't look like Cool Racing's Marty Jakobsen is going to be caught, but Ben Hanley with his tail up might get to Alex Lynn. Catching and passing will be very different things though. Unless Lynn gets held up in traffic, Hanley's not quite close enough yet. On board with Malte Jakobsen. Final corners here in Barcelona. Cool racing heading towards victory. Malte Jakobsen down into turn 14 for the final time. Nico Lapierre watches the monitors with the rest of the team. It is victory in the season opener for Cool Racing. Malte Jakobsen brings it across the line. There's the man that started the car, Lorenzo Fuzza. And Ritomo Miata did the middle stints. A great start to the season, LMP2 victory for Cool Racing. Six overall AF Corsa win in LMP2 Pro-Am. LMP3 victory goes to Team Virage and Formula Racing's Ferrari tops LMGT3. A new lineup claims victory here in Barcelona. Cool racing. Thanks to my two fantastic teammates, Ritomo and Lorenzo. Uh, first race together and first win. Um, but yeah, it's definitely true. It was super tricky out there. And as everybody knows, the tire deck here in Barcelona it's unbelievable, um, but it's what makes it difficult as a driver as well and challenging. And then it's even more fun when it pays off. But yeah, the team did an amazing job as well with the strategy. And then obviously the start from Lorenzo as well, jumping from P5 to P2, definitely kicked off the race. And then we just have to finish it off. So thank you very much, everybody. With United Auto Sport in third, Algarve Pro in second, Cool Racing top the LMP2 overall podium. And they lead the championship from day one. Oh yes, baby! From the Savona Portimo to the Savona Barcelona, we are still there. Winners in LMP2 Pro-Am from AF Corsa, Alessio Rivera, Mathieu Vaxivier and Francois Perodo. Yeah, it couldn't have been better. It was a, it was a tough week, the, especially for me. The, the prologue was not so easy, but uh, I managed to stay with the, the top cars at the start. And then uh, I got to drive through, but uh, yeah, these things happen. So I think this one is definitely credit to the two boys, particularly Alessio, who had an incredible middle stint. With Nielsen Racing in third, Richard Mill by TDS in second, it is AF Corsa who take the honours in LMP2 Pro-Am and lead the championship away from Barcelona. Our LMP3 winners, the team of the number eight Team Virage car, Julian Gerby, Bernardo Pinheiro, and last year's Le Mans Cup champion, Guilla Orion. We are winning the Legion European Series, we are winning the Le Mans Cup, and today we are winning the first race of uh, ELMS. So, yeah, the, I am super proud. We, we work a lot with the team, so, yeah, I am super happy. They're joined on the podium by Euro International, the number 11 crew finishing third and Cool Racing, the runners-up. But it is Team Virage with Vitri who have the points lead heading to Le Castellet. The first LMGT3 win went to Ferrari and Formula Racing's trio of dames, Johnny Larson, Conrad Larson and Niklas Nielsen. Great experience. So uh, we had a lot of close calls uh, to a win last year, uh, but we never made it happen. So it's uh, very nice to make it happen now. 
so Ferrari come out on top with GR Racing's Ferrari in second and the Lamborghini of Iron Lynx in third. And while Formula Racing head the standings, the unfortunate Iron Dames have just a single point to their names. And that concludes a thrilling opening round of the 2024 European Le Mans series. Race two will be in May, the second round at Le Castellet in France, and we will see you there.